I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you, I make you laugh. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most iconic unscripted movie scenes. Let me say something! Let me say something! <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the most celebrated and memorable instances of actors and filmmakers throwing out the script. Did we forget an unscripted moment worth mentioning? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jewelry Box Prank – Pretty Woman In the role that made her a major star, Julia Roberts glowed in every scene from Pretty Woman. But the moment that the film is best remembered for happens as Richard Gere's character gives her a beautiful diamond and ruby necklace. Something's missing. Well, nothing else is going to fit into this dress, I'll yeah, tell you that. Maybe something in this box. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. Just as Roberts reaches for the box, her scene partner playfully snaps it shut. The moment was meant to be a throwaway prank on Gear's part, which is what makes it so spontaneous and lovably goofy. Oh! <laughs> Roberts' genuine laughter gives the scene a brilliant final flourish. If you were going to buy this, how much would it cost? A quarter of a million. <laughs> a quarter of a million dollars. Number 9. Sword Fight – Raiders of the Lost Ark the filming of the classic adventure Raiders of the Lost Ark was not all fun and games. Along with much of the crew, star Harrison Ford contracted dysentery and was seriously under the weather during the shooting of the famous Marketplace fight sequence. We all uh, finally became ill except for Stephen, of course, who arrived with a full case of SpaghettiOs and Gaffer taped his mouth every time he took a shower. The action culminates in a dramatic encounter with a swordsman, originally set to be an elaborately choreographed duel. Ford's sickness prompted this stroke of genius instead. I said, uh, Stephen, why don't we just shoot this son bitch? And Stephen said, oh my God, well, I was thinking that too. Rather than engaging in a lengthy showdown, Indiana Jones subdues the baddie with one carefully placed shot. Partly inspired by the desperation of the production, this still feels like the perfect way to end the battle. <laughs> Number 8. How Am I Funny? Goodfellas in a roller coaster ride of comedy and terror, this pivotal scene between Joe Pesci and Ray Liotta might be the best in all of Goodfellas. Pesci's character Tommy takes offense that Henry calls him funny. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm not just. You know how you tell a story? What? No, no, I don't know. You said it. How do I know? You said I'm funny. What follows is a tense sequence full of uncertainty, with the hot-headed mobster eventually revealing that he's joking. This all came from a real-life incident, when Pesci was working as a waiter and told a mobster he was funny. The compliment was not well received. Joe told a story about a time that he was in a restaurant and he said to some guy, well, that's really funny. And that guy just flipped and turned on him. Director Martin Scorsese encouraged him to work the exchange into the movie. The actor's Academy Award-winning performance really stands out here in a stretch of dialogue that has authenticity to back it up. I almost had him. <laughs> yeah, stuttering prick yet. <laughs> Frankie, was he shaking? Number 7. I Know. Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. This emotional back and forth from The Empire Strikes Back let Han Solo remain, in Harrison Ford's own words, quote, a badass until the end. Since we were to believe it was the last time we were going to see him, yeah. let him go out the way we know him. Yeah. Let's remind people of who this schmuck is. <laughs> After arriving on Cloud City and being captured, the smuggler with the heart of gold is about to be frozen in carbonite. Princess Leia gives him one last parting message, and his reply somehow acknowledges not just her feelings, but everything between them. I love you. I know. Ford was scripted to say I love you too, but a last-minute discussion altered the dialogue. Thankfully for audiences, he chose to go in a different direction that revealed much more about his character. You know, if we're gonna say goodbye, Let's not leave in disguise. Right. Let's, but own, let's, let's you know, own who Han yeah, really is. Let's own it. Number six. Here's Johnny, The Shining. The horror masterpiece The Shining is crafted around Jack Nicholson's chilling performance. Light of my life. I'm not going to hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. 
After he goes insane and attacks his wife, he tries to chop down her bathroom door. As if she wasn't freaked out enough, he sticks his head through the hole and quotes famous late-night talk show announcer Ed McMahon. Here's Johnny! This ironic dialogue brings a darkly humorous counterpoint to the horrifying scene. And it leaves Nicholson's character seeming all the more unhinged. Eddie! Eddie boy! Fortunately, director Stanley Kubrick ultimately allowed the unscripted line to stay in the film. Number 5. Flames? On the side of my face? Clue. Madeline Kahn plays Mrs. White, the widow that ends up playing a deadly game of whodunit with her fellow Clue characters. I've admitted nothing. Well, you paid the blackmail. How many husbands have you had? Mine or other women's? Yours. Five. Five. Yes, just the five. Husbands should be like Kleenex. Soft, strong, and disposable. The last section of the film follows the various party guests as they try to find the culprit. Each and every person has a shady past, but in this key moment, White is reminded of how much she despises the maid Yvette. While I was in the master bedroom, you hurried downstairs and turned off the electricity, got the rope from the open cupboard, and throttled Yvette. The description of her hatred inspires a wonderfully manic improvisation from Khan. In what might be the funniest line of a hilarious movie, the actress steals away the comedy from her equally talented co-stars. It, the, it, flame, flames, flames on the side of my face, breathing, breath, heaving breaths. Heaving. Number 4. Glass Case of Emotion Anchorman – The Legend of Ron Burgundy Will Ferrell's Ron Burgundy is at his wit's end after his beloved dog Baxter is punted off a bridge. Now this is happening. Excuse me. Excuse me! Burgundy has one of the funnier breakdowns in comedy history as he delivers an unexpectedly hilarious update on his mental state. Calling his friend Brian, the anchor screams gibberish in a telephone booth. What did the bad man do, Ron? The motorcycle on the bridge! I hit him with a burrito! Ron! He took him! He took him with his foot! And he kicked him! He's finally able to provide his location, roughly, which doubles as a cry for help. Farrell sells the moment in yet another example of unscripted genius for the performer. Ron, ah! wh where are you? Ah, I'm in a glass case of emotion! In a movie full of funny sequences, this one stands out with its spontaneous energy. Number 3. Gear Rundown This is Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap expertly satirizes the lives of vapid rock stars. In this particular scene, lead guitarist Nigel Tufnell shows off his gear to the movie's director Rob Reiner. It's perfect, 1959, uh, you know, it just, you can, uh, listen. How much is just this? Just listen for a minute. I'm the not, sustain, listen to it. I'm not hearing anything. You would, though, if it were playing. All of the dialogue is completely improvised, but the best part comes when Tufnell describes a modification to his amplifier. Comedian Christopher Guest does it all without breaking, in a moment that gleefully pokes fun at the life of a self-serious musician. Eleven. Look, right across the board. Oh. Eleven, oh, I eleven, and most of eleven, and then amps go up to ten. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder. Speaking to their talent, Guest and Reiner play off each other so well that it feels scripted down to every second. One louder. Why don't you just make ten louder and make ten be the top? number and make that a little louder. These go to 11. Number 2. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Jaws. Even after so many filmmakers have imitated it, Jaws remains one of the great thrill rides in movie history. When you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming, the ocean turns red, and despite all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in. They Rip you to pieces. Director Steven Spielberg shies away from showing the shark clearly, building up to this first close encounter. When Roy Scheider's character Brody sees the size of the shark, his response perfectly captures the audience's anxiety. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. The line was actually an inside joke from the film's crew, who would utter the phrase throughout the troubled production. It later ended up in this pivotal scene as an ad lib, and became the most famous quote from a huge blockbuster. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I am Iron Man. Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. sends off his first film as Tony Stark in iconic fashion. The truth is,
I am Iron Man. Take the cannoli. The Godfather. Richard Castellano includes an iconic ad lib to a now legendary moment in the mob movie. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Billy Crystal as Miracle Max, the Princess Bride. The comedian makes this already funny comedy even more hilarious with his improv. True love is the greatest thing in the world. Except for nice MLT, a mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich when the mutton is nice and lean and the tomato is ripe. They're so perky. I love that. Wax scene. The 40-year-old virgin. Steve Carell's shouts of pain are very genuine. Sweaty pie hole! Como se llama? No! Kelly Clarkson! Coffee cream. Mrs. Doubtfire. Robin Williams makes his malfunctioning mask part of the scene. Egg whites, creme fraiche, powdered sugar, vanilla, and a little touch of alum. There you go, dear. Oh, there you go. You've got your cream and your sugar now. It's a little cappuccino. One drop or two. Would you like another one? Oh, there you go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, you talking to me? Taxi driver. You talking to me? You talking to me? This psychological thriller is one of the greatest collaborations between director Martin Scorsese and actor Robert De Niro. The dark drama follows Travis Bickle on his journey to becoming a violent vigilante. During one scene in his apartment, Bickle plays up his dream persona as a tough guy in the mirror. Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. The script doesn't provide for any dialogue in this particular moment, but De Niro includes a famous improvisation that nails the twisted nature of his character. He started improvising it, and he kept saying, are you talking to me? Uh, and I was sort of at his feet in, in front of the mirror, right in front of him, and we just kept repeating. He just kept repeating it and uh, shot a ton of footage on it. To this day, some people quote the line without even knowing its origin. Even fewer people realize that it was all a result of the performer's dedication to his craft. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, am I gonna scream this? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think I can do it. The man, put it Baxter. No, I, I don't think I can do it. I was just gonna sound weird. <laughs> 